In a new study, researchers compared 600 different morphological features of the skull, across 95 different human skulls and mandibles. They applied a set of mathematical techniques to this data, to generate branching diagrams that depict the phylogenetic relationships of the various hominin species. According to the findings, there were four main lineages of later Pleistocene humans, each descended from a common ancestor, Homo sapiens, Homo neanderthalensis, and are two groups that have proven difficult to classify. This study identified a group of related fossils that fall between Neanderthals and Homo heidelbergensis, and may be related to the last common ancestor of modern humans. Remarkably, the findings suggest that the African Dutu cranium belongs to the same group as the Nama the partial cranium from the Indian subcontinent, and the Maba cranium and the Shuchang cranium from East Asia, discovered in a region now known as China. According to scientists, gene flow could have been bidirectional, so some of the traits seen in Africa could have originated in Asia. According to supporters of this theory, we are talking about a multi-regional population that is linked recurrently by migration and genetic exchanges. In fact, certain characteristics, associated with modern Homo sapiens may have evolved in Asia, and were only later carried to Africa. More comparisons between the Ndutu skull and the Asian skulls are required. But the implications are massive. We're talking about rewriting the origins of our species as we know it, rethinking how our forefathers migrated, interacted, and evolved. The Ndutu skull is the partial cranium of a hominin that has been assigned variously to late Homo erectus, Homo rhodesiensis, an archaic Homo sapiens, from the middle Pleistocene, found at Lake Ndutu in northern Tanzania. Lake Ndutu is a seasonal lake in the Serengeti, adjacent to the main gorge at Olduvai. During September and October 1973, the Tanzanian Department of Antiquities conducted an excavation of the exposed flats of the western shoreline of Lake Ndutu. The excavation site had considerable amounts of lithic and faunal material on the surface. The Ndutu cranium was found on the first occupational floor of the site, which is the oldest level. According to researchers, preliminary dating of bone found in the first occupational level has yielded a general age of 500,000 to 600,000 years. Other estimates, based on the association of the Ndutu deposits with the beds at Olduvai suggest an age approaching 400,000 years. The Ndutu cranium was badly damaged and fragmented when it was found. The occipital was well preserved and almost completely intact. The temporals were damaged, the left temporal was more complete than the right temporal. The parietals were shattered, the majority of the right parietal was reconstructed, along with fragments of the left parietal. The frontal was mostly gone, a small piece of the right side above the brow ridge remained. The pieces of the skull were repaired and reconstructed. The initial reconstruction, which was accomplished by hand, was littered with technical errors that are more accurately fixed by modern technology, including retro-deformation, three-dimensional assembly, and reflection. After having realized that the morphology of the specimen matched a specimen from Spain, Ndutu was fully reconstructed. In their study, researchers state they that intend their work as a founding for future phylogenetic studies, of which this specimen is rarely included. The updated reconstruction of Ndutu suggests that the specimen has a more prognathic face, a narrower vault and a brow that projects less and is narrower than the original reconstruction. Where it is similar to Homo sapiens, the sides of the brain case are more vertical, when viewed from the back. Some researchers have noticed Ndutu's affinities to archaic Homo sapiens and even proposed its allocation to a subspecies. Indeed, the Ndutu skull seems to form a link between Homo erectus and archaic Homo sapiens, due to it having certain features in common with both, and was granted classification as Homo erectus. Many researchers disagree with this classification, and believe that its features suggested that it was more similar to the African fossils referred to as archaic Homo sapiens. According to this, the length and breadth dimensions of the Ndutu cranium are similar to earlier Homo erectus fossils from Ethiopia. Based on the overall morphology of the Ndutu hominid, some researchers claim that the fossil hominids it most resembles are Broken Hill, Bodo, and other archaic Homo sapiens found in Africa. Chris Stringer, of the British Museum, classifies the cranium as belonging to Homo heidelbergensis Homo rhodesiensis, a species considered to be intermediate between Homo erectus and Homo sapiens, rather than as early Homo sapiens, 
but considers it to display a more sapiens-like zygomaxillary morphology than certain other examples of Homo rhodesiensis. In other studies, it is classed as a soul sister to the Neanderthals and another group containing the Steinheim skull, plus a group related to Homo antecessor, Homo longi, and Homo sapiens, and a very strong morphological similarity with the Simo de los Hughes's skull from Spain. This classification makes it much closer to Homo sapien than to the last common ancestor. Based on genetic research, there are genetic traces in extant Homo sapiens of earlier introgression from at least three extinct human groups. So how does this affect any definition of Homo sapiens in the fossil record? In comparing the taxonomy of recent fossil hominins the message is to concentrate on biology, avoid semantic traps and realize that any species-level taxonomy based on fossil material is going to be only an approximate reflection of real-world complexities, say paleoanthropologists. In fact, as long as the biological species concept which does not work well for many closely related extant species of mammals, is not imposed. Species can be recognized in the fossil record as evolutionary lineages, which maintain their identity through significant periods of time and in the face of small amounts of introgression. On that basis, both Homo neanderthalensis and Homo sapiens can be treated as species, with a time depth that stretches back into the middle Pleistocene. But that pragmatic use of the term species must be tempered with a recognition that these species were not genetically impermeable. Scientists say that African fossils assigned to Homo heidelbergensis rhodesiensis are divided into groups which, although damaged or incomplete, apparently display a more sapiens like zygomaxillary morphology, and those that do not, including Bodo and Broken Hill. If this is not a reflection of sexual dimorphism or allometric factors at work in the large faces of Bodo and Broken Hill, it may indicate taxonomic diversity in the African Middle Pleistocene record, which could exclude those fossils from representing ancestral Homo sapiens. For example, in India, the Namadha human, also known as the Namadha man, is an extinct human that lived in central India during the Middle and Late Pleistocene epochs. The discoverer classified a skull cap discovered on the Namadha River's bank as an archaic human and named it Namadha man, with the scientific name Homo erectus namadensis. Analysis of additional fossils from the same location revealed that the individual was possibly female, prompting the introduction of a new name, the Namadha human. It is still India's oldest human species. The discovery of the Namadha human has been described as the event that brought the Indian subcontinent back into paleoanthropological focus. The fossil had been reclassified as archaic Homo sapiens, evolved Homo erectus, Homo heidelbergensis, and, controversially, Homo narmadensis. Nevertheless, more fossil discoveries have suggested a closer relationship to archaic Homo sapiens. Meanwhile, in East Asia, farmers discovered an ancient cranium near the Chinese village of Maba in 1958. Many authorities consider Maber man to be an archaic Homo sapiens or an Asian extension of Homo heidelbergensis, a form intermediate between Homo erectus and Homo sapiens. As the scientists investigated the Maber cranium further, they discovered that the fossils consisted of a skull cap and parts of the right upper face, with parts of the nose still attached. The researchers saw a link with Homo erectus because the brow ridges were pronounced, forming an arch over each eye, and the brain case bones were low and thick. Even so, the brain appeared to be larger than that of Homo erectus, though precise measurement of cranial capacity is impossible due to the skull's incomplete base. Maber man exhibits traits resembling not only Homo erectus, archaic Homo sapiens, and Homo heidelbergensis, but also modern humans and Neanderthals. If the skull reconstruction is correct, the Maber man's upper face morphology is similar to that of Neanderthals, with a prominent nose and thick parietal bone. The vertical frontal squama and thin vault are similar to those found in modern humans. Maber man has an estimated cranial capacity of 1,300 cubic centimeters, despite the fact that we do not have a precise measurement. Importantly, this is comparable to the cranial capacities of modern humans and Neanderthals. Finally, more 100,000-year-old human skulls from East Asia reveal a complex mix of time and space trends. Two partial archaic human skulls from the site of Xuchang in central China open up a new window into the biology and population patterns of modern humans' immediate ancestors in eastern Eurasia. The Xuchang fossils, which have been securely dated to around 100,000 years ago, exhibit a mosaic of features. 
they share a large brain size and lightly built cranial vaults, with modest brow ridges shared with late archaic and early modern humans from the old world. They share a low and broad brain case that rounds onto the inferior skull with earlier, middle Pleistocene, Eastern Eurasian humans. The skulls share two distinct features with Western Eurasian Neanderthals, the configuration of their semicircular canals and the detailed arrangement of the back of the skull. The biological nature of modern humans' immediate ancestors in eastern Eurasia has been poorly understood, based on the human fossil record. The discovery of these late archaic human skulls from Xuchang and Meiba adds significantly to our understanding of these ancient people. More importantly, the characteristics of these fossils support a pattern of regional population continuity in eastern Eurasia, which is supported by shared long-term trends in human biology and populational connections across Eurasia. They emphasize the interconnectedness and dynamic nature of human evolution, leading up to modern human emergence. In fact, new genetic data adds further complexity to reconstructing the nature and dating of the last common ancestor of Neanderthals and modern humans, according to a paper by Chris Stringer of the British Museum and the godfather of the Out of Africa theory. Mitochondrial DNA indicates that the last common ancestor lived around 400,000 years ago which is consistent with a Heidelbergensis origin. Yet, as previously discussed, the clear Neanderthal morphological and genetic affinities of the Spanish fossils, now dated to at least 400,000 years ago, indicate that an evolutionary divergence occurred much earlier. These Spanish fossils are very similar than Dutu skull from Africa, also dated to 400,000 years ago. Furthermore, using the most recent autosomal human mutation rate estimates, the divergence date of the Neanderthalensis and Sapiens lineages can be placed earlier, between 550 and 765,000 years ago, which is consistent with only the oldest suggested examples of Heidelbergensis as potentially representing the last common ancestor. Scientists believe another possibility is that the last common Ahod a Homo antisessalike morphology, with the one group exemplified by Arago, Petrolona. Bodo and Broken Hill having more in common facial with the Spanish fossils and subsequent Neanderthals. Perhaps Homo antecessor was a branch of a lower Pleistocene radiation of Eurasian lineages, that gave rise to Neanderthals in Europe and Homo sapiens in Africa. If this is not the last common ancestor of sapiens and Neanderthalensis, due to derived facial morphology and because known fossils predate the actual divergence date, then what did the last common ancestor look like, known as Ancestor X? It may have had a lower face morphology more akin to Antecessor than Heidelbergensis, but what about the rest of the cranium? However, the last common ancestor may have displayed a mosaic of primitive and derived traits, with the latter being differentially inherited in descendant lineages. Thus, the cranial vault could have been due to like, the facial morphology could have been Antecessor-like and retained in the Sapiens line in Africa and the dentition could have been more Neanderthal-like than previously thought, and then increasingly modified in the modern human lineage. In the coming years, new studies and discoveries should allow for proper testing of these ideas. Indeed, based on the, the discovery of human remains from the Near East, which feature a mix of Neanderthal and Homo erectus traits, some researchers believe the apparent diversity of supposedly unique human forms during the Middle Pleistocene was the result of a complex network of cross-continental interbreeding. Thus, some archaic humans could have been a mix of Neanderthal relatives, and an already widespread archaic human-Asian population, 